Hello, I'm Seema and welcome to part 40 of the chapter Equilibrium. It is now time to introduce buffer solutions to you. In the previous video, I told you about weak acids and weak bases when they result in the formation of salts. And when you put these salts into water, they cause hydrolysis and they break down the water molecule into H positive and OH negative, which then reacts with that weak anion or cation and thereby it causes a change in the pH of the solution. Using this knowledge, a special kind of solution was made which is known as the buffer solution. A buffer solution is one that resists a change in its pH even if you add acid or base to it, it does not allow a change in its pH for a considerable range. So let us now study what are these buffer solutions and how that knowledge of the weak acid and weak bases when they make salts and they cause the hydrolysis causing a change in the pH, how we use that knowledge to prepare these buffer solutions. So how would you define a buffer solution? A buffer solution is one which resists any change in pH when a strong acid or a strong base is added to it. It resists, it does not allow the pH to change or the pH becomes kind of fixed. So what would this buffer solution be made up of? It is usually made up of a mixture of a weak acid and its salt with a strong base or it is made up of a weak base with its salt with a strong acid, right? So there are two types of buffers. You have acid buffer and basic buffer. If you're taking acid buffer or basic buffer depending on whether you took the weak acid or you took the weak base. If you take a weak acid like uh, acetic acid, right? You took a weak acid like acetic acid and it's salt with a strong base. So acetate is the ion that you get from here. So with that ion, a salt formed with a strong base. And what is the strong base? Sodium hydroxide is a strong base. So the salt with sodium hydroxide that will be formed with acetic acid would be sodium acetate. So this mixture of acetic acid and sodium acetate or in other words a weak acid and a salt and its salt with a strong base. Such a mixture acts as a buffer. On the other hand and such a mixture would be known as an acidic buffer because it has a weak acid. And on the other hand, you could have a weak base and weak base, for example, you have ammonium hydroxide is the weak base and it's salt with a strong acid. So the, if, if you have ammonium hydroxide and react it with a strong acid like um, hydrogen chloride, that is hydrochloric acid. So it will result in the formation of ammonium chloride. So this is a salt with a strong acid. So a mixture of a weak base with, a, with its salt with a strong acid would also act as a buffer. And this would be known as a basic buffer. So we see that buffers can be acidic buffers or basic buffers depending on whether you took a weak acid or a weak base. Then there is a third category also of solution which can act as a buffer. And that is when you have a mixture of a weak of a salt which is formed from a weak acid and a weak base that also results in the formation of a buffer solution. So the third kind we would say is that the solution of any salt of a weak acid and a weak base should also act as a buffer. Even that should have that uh, buffering effect. So a buffer is more like a cushion you know when you uh, when you go and sit on a flat hard metallic bench or a hard uh, wood floor or something and you just go and sit it it hurts but if you have a cushion over it it takes the impact of the hardness away so a buffer solution is something like a cushion you know for acids and bases it does not bring immediate change it, the ph does not immediately change in the case of a buffer solution a very common example of buffer is our blood and how important uh, buffers are you can imagine from just the fact that imagine how many things we eat and how many sometimes we have toxic fumes there's so much uh, acidic fumes and uh, whatever acid based the foods that we eat may be acidic or basic the stomach consists of concentrated hydrochloric acid in it 
and the blood in our body it is at a certain pH and that certain it is a buffer and since it is a buffer it does not get affected by whatever acid or base we keep putting into our body the pH is still maintained and that keeps the body safe so you can understand how important buffers are in the biological world even the human urine is a buffer solution we'll study about that a little later right now let us understand just to introduce as i'm introducing buffers to you let us slowly move with the buffers so we when you have a solution of any salt which is made by a weak acid and a weak base that should also result in the formation of a buffer for example, ammonium acetate formed by the, uh, by the acid, acetic acid and ammonium hydroxide which is a weak acid and a weak base. That should also act as a buffer. So buffers can be categorized into two, the acidic buffer and the basic buffer and the third of course is a salt buffer. So acidic buffer would be formed when you have a weak acid and it's salt with a strong base. A basic buffer would be one which would be formed by a weak base with its salt with a strong acid. Now, whenever you have acid buffers, acid, it means the buffer should act as a, is acidic in nature, which means that its pH, it should act as a buffer at a pH, since it is acidic in nature, its pH would be less than 7. And it would be, it would yet at whatever pH it is, it would act as a buffer. So we say acidic buffers are buffers which act as buffers at a pH less than, they have a pH less than 7 at 298 Kelvin. And on the other hand, a basic buffer would be basic in nature. Therefore, its pH originally would be higher than 7 and at 298 Kelvin. Examples of acid and basic buffers, another example has been given benzoic acid and sodium benzoate are examples of acid buffers and basic buffer you have boric acid, borax, sodium hydroxide are examples of basic buffers. How effective is a buffer? How do you know how effective or uh, how good a buffer is? That is the effectiveness of a buffer is determined by a term which is known as the buffer capacity. What is the capacity of the buffer which means that how much of acid or base can it take before it really its pH gets disturbed before the pH gets disturbed how much of the push or uh, the jerks can it take like if you have a shocker in the uh, car or if you have springs in your sofa how much of shock can they take that is that similar it is something similar to that so a buffer capacity is how much of acid can it take before its pH changes so how would you define buffer capacity buffer capacity is the number of moles of a strong acid or a strong how many moles of a strong acid or a strong base would be required to change the pH of one liter of that buffer solution one liter of the buffer solution by one unit that is if the pH if you're adding an acid the pH should how much of acid will you have to add to decrease the pH by one and if you're adding a strong base how much of that base would you have to add in the in one liter of the buffer solution in order to cause an increase of pH by one that is known as the buffer capacity so in, by one unit one liter the ph of one liter of a buffer solution by one unit keeping the total amount of the acid and the salt in the buffer constant whatever once you've taken the cup the buffer solution the uh, amount of salt and the acid with which it was made remains constant you're not changing that concentration but you are adding a certain acid or a base to it and then how much of that acid or base would you have to add before changing the pH by one value if you add acid you remember the pH goes down by one and if you add a base the pH should go up by one so how much of that is required would be the buffer capacity so buffer capacity is the number of moles of a strong acid or a base which is required to change the pH of one liter of the buffer solution by one unit 
keeping the total amount of the acid and the salt in the buffer constant it is when is this buffer capacity maximum when or when is the cushioning effect the maximum when would the cushioning effect be maximum the cushioning effect of the buffer solution would be maximum when the acid and the salt or the base and the salt are equimolar they are present in equal number of moles in the buffer mixture in the buffer solution that is when the buffer, buffer capacity is found to be the maximum so we say it is maximum when it contains equal number of moles of acid or base and its salts another thing is the buffer range what is buffer range when you prepare a buffer solution I told you it would be the best the buffer solution would be formed when you have a weak acid or a weak base with its salt with a strong acid and a strong base you know how it works it forms a buffer solution and the buffer solution can be formed at different pH values by uh, arranging how much of acid and how much of salt you have you can have uh, buffer solutions at different pH values of course the buffer solution would be best when you have equal moles of both but you could have a little different number of moles also so the buffer solution can keep acting as a buffer not at a particular pH it's not like only at a particular pH it would act as a buffer no for a certain range you can prepare a solution uh, which contains such substances that is a weak acid and it's uh, salt with a strong base or a weak base with its salt with a strong acid with such a mixture or a salt which is made by a weak acid and a weak base you could have um, the buffer solutions you could prepare diff buffer solutions at a few at a few readings that is the, that could be a few pH apart so that range of pH in which such a mixture would act as a buffer is fixed and that is known as the pH range. So we say all buffer solutions remain effective over a small pH range and this pH range is known it is known as the buffer range the small pH range in which the solution can act as a buffer and this small pH range can be determined by adjusting how much of acid and how much of salt did you take so this buffer range usually in the case of acidic buffers whatever is the pH value at which it is best it can still act as a, as a buffer for a minus 1 pKa value and a plus 1 pKa value for that weak acid. For that weak acid, the pKa value less than 1 and more than 1, that is minus 1 to plus 1, that is the range in which it will continue to act as a buffer. And similarly, for a basic buffer also, what is the value for a basic buffer? Your pKw, that is the ionic constant of water, the uh, potential of it, that is the power of it minus log of ionic product minus the minus log of the uh, um, the equilibrium constant for the base or the dissociation constant of the base for that also this would also give you the pH it would it would still act because pOH would be pKb will give you pOH so to get the pH you will have to find out the pKw minus pKb so uh, or pKa would be that so this would all this range would also it would also be effective as a buffer between a pH range of minus 1 to plus 1. So we say this is known as the pH range of a buffer or it is known as the buffer range. I'll introduce just one more thing. You can calculate the pH of an acid and a basic buffer and for this we use the Henderson's equation. The Henderson's equation is, if you're finding out the pH of an acidic buffer, then it would be equal to pKa, where pKa is the dissociation constant of that weak acid, plus log of the concentration of the salt divided by the concentration of that acid. That will give you the pH of the acidic buffer. You can use this to calculate the pH of the acidic buffer. In the case of a basic buffer, since we are... Uh, in the case of a basic buffer, you have OH negative ions. So, POH would be equal to PKB 
plus log of salt concentration of salt upon base but this gives us the pOH it does not give us the pH the idea was to find out the pH of acidic and basic uh, buffers so how would you calculate pH if you have pOH pKW is equal to pH plus pOH so pH would be equal to pKW minus pOH and pOH we just calculated is pKB plus log of the concentration of salt upon the concentration of base so this is the Henderson's all these three are actually called the Henderson equation to calculate the pH for the acidic or basic buffer in this in the second step you can see for in the case of basic buffer you use these two the pH you can calculate by this equation but in order to know the pH you will actually be able to find the pOH will then which will then have to be substituted in this equation but that is pKW minus pOH to get the value of pH that is how you would calculate it using the Henderson equation so I will stop the video right now and we will continue with our study of buffer solutions in the next video. So uh, please tune in for the next video and if you found this one helpful, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, recommend it to your friends and please keep returning for more videos in chemistry. Thank you for watching and bye bye for now.